Doctor Who and the Magic of the Angels Chapter 1 Amy Pond looked at the plastic bowler hat with a union jack pattern. You're not really going to wear that, are you? she asked the Doctor. The doctor smiled and raised the hat politely. Yes, it's cool. It's, it's my T-shirt. He's wearing a white T-shirt with a slogan, My companion went to London. All I got was this lousy T-shirt. Amy rolled her eyes. I can't believe you got them to print that for you. At least he didn't buy the T-shirt that said, I am with stupid, said Amy's husband, Roy. I know he would have made me walk next to him while he was wearing it. Of course I would, said the doctor. I don't think it was stupid at all. Now come on, stupid. We're missing the tour. The three friends were on the upper deck of the open-top London bus. The sun was beating down, but the doctor still wore a tweed suit over his T-shirt. He's sitting on the front ne- next to the tour guide. Amy and Rory sat on the east behind him. The tour guide, whose name was Janet, was trying to talk about London landmarks. The doctor was joining him, but his efforts just seemed to get on Janet's nerves. On the left, you see the Tower of London. Janet began... This building started in the year 1066. I've been locked up there. Five or six times, said the doctor, he pointed towards the castle. If you squint, you see, you can see my room. Is that, win- is that window there? Is that window there? Janet's microphone picked up the doctor's words as other tourists laughed, but Janet ignored him. There's also a top secret base below the tower, said the doctor. And he tapped him on the shoulder before he could say any more. It's a top secret. Perhaps you shouldn't mention it, she, she said. Doctor nodded. Good point, he mimed, putting a zip across his mouth. He was quite quiet until they crossed a the river and were passing a globe theatre. That's why I thought so which monsters, he said. The old theatre, I mean, not this one. The old one was just a bit to the left, of course, Shakespeare. Help me fight the witches. Good old Shakespeare. He's a lovely man. His breast spelt a bit, but is that, that's not his fault. No toothpaste back then. Everyone on the bus, apart from Janet, began to giggle. Amy put on large sunglasses and held her hand over her mouth. It didn't hide the fact she was laughing. London Eye was high open in the year 2000. Janet tried a bit later. The bus was going on along the south bank. Oh yes, the doctor said. Said the doctor. That's when Nemesis used it as a part of their plan. To conquer Earth. You must, rem- you must remember that. They were shot with no dummies coming to life. Then the doctor told the stories about pig flying in a spaceship into Big Ben. That Janet stopped, snapped. The bus stopped. The other toys booed as the doctor was led off by the driver. Amy Rory followed. Amy was laughing, but Rory was holding up her hand to hide his face. They had been thrown off a bus before, he said. The doctor looked puzzled. I was only trying to make things a bit more fun. Amy tucked in her hand through the doctor's arm, led him towards an ice cream van. Never mind, we should do the toys thing like you wanted. We'll just have to walk instead. He sat on the bank of the river, eating ice cream cones. Bell's boat sewed along the water in front of them. Children laughed and couples held hands. Mmm, said Amy, licking a blob of a melting ice cream off the side of her cornet. This is perfect. Better than fighting monsters, Rory. And as he ate the last bit of ice cream. And he frowned as he spotted a post on a wall nearby. It's not quite perfect. The doctor and Amy turned around to see what he was looking at. Missing some since May the 6th, Kate Henley. Photos showed a pretty blonde girl. She didn't seem much younger than Amy. It wasn't the first missing poster they'd seen that day. Most of them also showed young women, men or women, boys or girls. The doctor walked over and put up her hand to touch the face of the picture. So much sadness, he said softly. The sadness that made her leave home. The sadness of those left behind. Amy joined him. She reached out of her hand to touch his. We can't solve every problem, she said gently. We should be able to... The doctor sounded fierce. What's the point of doing what we do? We can't help everyone. I used to think that too sometimes, said Rory. I used to wonder why I became a nurse. So many people. I just can't help. Couldn't help. In the end, I had to accept that helping some people was better than helping no one. Why is it Rory, said Amy, 
smiling, she linked her arm through his. My boys, my boys, who help people. She linked her other arm through the doctors. Come on, we're on holiday, remember? Freedom walked off arm in arm. What do you want to know? She asked. She asked the doctor. We've been to St. Paul's. We got thrown out of the whispering garage for shouting, said Rory. Wouldn't let us in at Buckingham Palace to have tea with the Queen, said Amy. The doctor frowned and pulled a crumpled paper bag up his jacket pocket. I been I even brought doughnuts, he said. Her Majesty loves doughnuts. We were thrown out of Madame de Souls when the doctor threw on the waxwork of Guy Fawkes, said Rory. Well, he got his moustache wrong, said the doctor. Guy was very proud of his moustache. They've been chucked off the open bus tour, said Amy. There can't be many more things to be thrown out of. They're walking along the river as they talked. The doctor admits mindedly, took a donut out of the paper bag and bit into it. Jared squatted all down his chin. Rory spotted another poster. This one did not show missing girl. It was an advert for a show. We're not, f- we're not thrown out of the theatre yet, he pointed out. Great idea, said the doctor. I love a show. He looked at the poster too. Some in star. The master of magic, lovely. Some in star. He sounds like he should be doing children parties. Not West End shows, said Amy. Amy said. Nonsense, it would be great, the doctor said, told her. I love a good magic trick. He wiped his chin with a hanky, looking puzzled. In fact, I seemed to have made jam magically appeared on my face. Rory and Amy looked at each other and laughed. Still, with a present frown in his face, the doctor took another donut out his bag and started to eat it. Rory and Amy laughed even more. They crossed the river and what? Wandered through the streets, Rory and Amy both spotted several more missing their bonuses. Neither of them pointed out the posters to the doctor. They came to Trailfurger Square. They stopped to look at Elsa's column. The doctor patted the head of one of the huge bronze lions. Got the base. He pointed to out the statues that stood in plimps at three corners of the square. The fourth corner also had a plinth, but it was empty. He hadn't had enough money to, for the last statue. He said off. He told Amy and Laurie. I heard he was showing works of art on, on it. Instead, said Amy, something new every two ye- every year or two. Doctor nodded. That's right. I think they're now looking for something that can stay on it for good. You bet in the third donut. Right. Let's see about getting tickets for Sammy Star Star Show. Chapter 2. They're sitting in the front row of souls. Any minute now, the lights will go out and the show will begin. Amy flickered through a programme. Hey, it says here, Sammy Star used to be ch- do children's party, he told the others. I know I said he sounded like he did, but that's weird. He must be pretty good to go from that to the West End. He was on one of those TV talent contests, Rory told her. He said he was on Pugster. Britain's Got Magic, something like that. Oh, yeah, Amy turned the page. Got all about it here. Hang on, though. He didn't win it. He was laughed off the programme, it says. He had the last laugh, some he saw. Now has a sell-out West End show. He's won great acclaim for the graveyard ghost tricks. A form the final rally of his act. Well, the boy's done good. Rory frowned. If this show's a sell-out... How come we got the best seats in the house? Doctor looked slightly sheepish. Oh, bought our tickets weeks ago, at least. That's what they told me at the book, box office just now. So I'd better make sure I do it. Remind me to pop back in time and buy them later. Will you? Universe must might collapse if I don't. As if it's to distract them, he quickly added, Anyone well, like a donut? He put his hand in the pocket, found only an empty bag. Someone's nicked my donuts. Amy limped across the white, a splodge of jam off his face. You already ate them. You donut. You donut. The theatre was almost full now. The only empty seat was in a row by the doctor. Amy, Roy and Amy. That's odd, said the doctor. He looked over his shoulder at the empty row. They bought seats. That good. 
You think they've been keen to see the show, yet they haven't even turned up. Oh, this might be them, said Amy. I was so lucky behind them. Party early people were coming out down the aisle. Were led by a middle-aged w- woman in a navy blue blazer, gold buttons. She ushered her croup to the empty road, telling them, hurry up, hurry up, much too loudly. Just as the last of the party sat down, the lights went out. Amy heard someone behind the drawer in their breath sharply. Don't worry, Mrs. Hooper. It's just the show starting, said a cheerful voice. Amy thought the voice belonged to the bit of Blazy woman. You wonder why so many people thought being old was the same as being stupid. Curtain was raised, a spotlight shone on the stage. A figure stood in the middle of it, head bowed, it wore a black top and it was wrapped in a cloak. There's a rumble of drums, a voice from above. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr Sunny Star as the arms crashed loudly and more bright another bright lit uh, Spotlight followed a man swinging down from above. As he reached the cloaked figure, the swinging man kicked him out. The cloak crum- crumbled into a heap. The audience grasped. The top hat rolled away. A semi-star landed on stage. He scooped up the hat, pulled a white, large white rabbit out of it, and placed the hat on his head. Everyone clapped as he took a bow. Very nice, said the doctor, raising his voice, so he could hear him by the applause. Of course, he said. He had a second hat with a rabbit, and it waited, ready waiting for him. That's why the stage is only lit by spotlights, so you don't wouldn't spot those hats being swapped. Amy glared at him. Don't spoil it, she hissed. Amy could have saved a breath. For each of Sammy's tricks, the doctor announced how it was done. He wasn't trying to show off. And he knew that working out the tricks was just a bit of show he enjoyed the most. The shame Sammy Star didn't seem to enjoy as, as much. First, he's clearly trying to ignore the doctor. Later, he started to twitch and glare at the front row. Amy was quite relieved when it came to the interval. Having fun, she asked the doctor. He sat in his seat at the front. He nodded shy, happily. Oh, yes, although. A frown crossed his face and stood up. Back in a minute, I want to check out a few things. Amy Roy sat for a few moments, just holding hands. You don't think someone thinks wrong, do you? Amy said after a while. Nay, no, said Rory, though you looked worried. Just because we never had a holiday without monsters or crashing space kits before, spaceships before. Well, no monsters so far. We've been here almost a day, said Amy. Monsters? A shaky voice from the, ra- from the row, from the row behind? Is a word that Amy and Rory couldn't ignore. They both spun round the spy- speaker was a member of the elderly party. You looked at her... In the eighties, the tears were trickling down her cheeks. Amy knelt up on her seat and reached over the back to hold the old lady's hand. Hey, don't cry, she said gently. What's the matter? 